Hey, it's Erin. How do you build a great pair of legs? When I think about this, I think about not only size, but shape. We want to create curves because where there's curves, you create interest. You draw the eye to that area and working from top to bottom. I think about upper glutes. Sometimes it can be hard to have volume there, but if you create those upper glutes, you've got the appearance of a smaller waist and everything starts to flow really nicely. Looking to the quads, building that quad sweep is going to give size and shape to the outer leg right above the knee you've got that beautiful curve now you can't stop there you have to keep going to the calves beautifully shaped and sized calves are going to match everything up and tie the whole physique together now flipping around we have to look at hamstrings that hamstring peak is going to be really important for developing not only that glute but also having the curve below the glute so that's the total package to me and I think this workout does a great job at targeting these areas what we're going to do is we're going to work through some compound movements that target the areas and then we're going to pull out that shape with the isolation movements so I think you're really going to love this workout without further ado let's get in the gym and train our first exercise is a smith machine sumo squat now, this exercise is going to target upper glutes, quads, adductors. And to get into position for this, you want to make sure that the bar is sitting across your traps. You're grasping the bar with an overhand grip. You want to think about squeezing your upper arms towards your rib cage with elbows pointed down. Core stays nice and tight. As you're placing your feet, step a little bit in front of the bar. So you don't want to be directly under the bar. You want to be just a little bit in front with your feet and feet should be about one and a half to two times shoulder width apart with toes pointing out and knees pointing out as well. You're going to think about sinking straight down, not bringing your torso back, but think about sinking straight down. This is really going to hit those glutes a lot more. And if you're able to go below parallel with your upper leg, then you're going to get even more glute recruitment. So you're going to give a little pause mid rep, push the weight through the heels and think about driving back upwards using just your glutes. If you've got longer femurs like I do and you fold up like a taco during the squat, you're going to love this variation. So just keep that torso under the bar. Don't let it shift behind the bar. Next, we're moving on to a banded stiff leg deadlift or RDL. And you're going to set this band up at right about hip height, just a little bit below. So where the crease of the hip is, you want that band to sit just below the crease, and this is going to allow you to comfortably hinge. Now I'm going to step forward and place some tension on the band because we're working against tension on this exercise. And using the band is not only great for getting a little extra contraction at that mid rep point, but it's also awesome for giving you the cues that you need. So as you lift the bar up, you're going to think about driving your hips forward in order to help bring your upper body to that standing position. Now our hands are at a, an overhand grip and we're just about shoulder width apart with that grip. And you're going to think about driving the weight through the heels, but the entire time you're really also pushing against this band. So as you lower the weight, you will allow the band to help drive your hips back just a bit. And when you come up again, you really want to think about squeezing, getting that good contraction at that mid rep point with the glutes since we have that band to work on. If you don't have that band, you don't have to worry about squeezing your glutes at the top, but we, we've got that good resistance to work against. Next, we're going to do a goblet Spanish squat. So step into the band and place that band just under the knee. So you want it to be resting against the top of the calf below the crease of the knee. And you're going to step out and feet are going to be shoulder width apart, maybe a bit wider if you would like. You're going to get that dumbbell into goblet position where the butt of your hand is underneath the top part of that dumbbell and it's resting comfortably against your clavicle. Now, 
As you sink down into the squat, you're going to think about keeping your upper body nice and tall and really think about the resistance of the band here. And as you come up out of the squat, think about pulling your knees back against the band. So you are going to pull or push your knees back against the band and really feel that strong resistance. This is an excellent exercise, not only for knee health, but for quad development. So take your time with it and really focus on utilizing that band to get a really good contraction in your quads. Next, we're moving on to a double up, single leg negative leg curl. This exercise is excellent, not only for building strength in the hamstring, but also building size. So if you're looking for that hamstring peak, this is a great exercise. Now the idea here is to use weight that's just a little bit lighter than you'd normally use for your regular leg curls. And you're going to get into position and you wanna to try to think about pushing your hips into the pad and creating a strong base. And you're only hinging at the knee here, so you're going to think about pulling that pad up evenly with both hamstrings, lowering your non-working leg, and slowly lowering that working leg. So we're kind of doing force negatives here where you will be going at a weight that's heavier than you could normally do for single leg leg curls. Next up, we are moving on to calf raise. And I'm doing the calf raise on the leg press here, but if you've got a traditional standing calf raise machine, or if you want to add plates to the Smith machine, feel free to do that as well. Now for the calf raise, a couple of things to consider here. I'm doing it with my toes pointing forward, but you can also vary. You can point outward and point inward if you would like. Now you want your legs to be straight. So you want your knee to be soft, but straight. So don't lock out the knee, but also don't keep a bend in it. Um, you're gonna hit a little bit more gastrocnemius, which is the, the tiny little calf muscle. Um, if you've got a bend in your knee, that's, that's too much. So what you wanna think about is lowering uh, your heels until you feel that really good stretch. And then as you come up, you're thinking about pushing your heels forward versus raising your heels. And do a little pause as you reach that stretching point and give a little pause as you reach that mid rep or that squeeze point. You want that really strong contraction and you really wanna think about driving your heel forward towards your toes. Our last exercise may not look like much, but this is a banded external rotation and it is excellent for upper glute development. You're going to need a mini band here and you're going to place it around both feet right at about the arch and you'll get onto a bench face down. So right at about hip level, you want the edge of that bench and you're going to keep your legs straight and separate your feet enough to where you feel that tension. And what you'll do is a very small movement. You're just going to pull your heels apart and then bring them back together. So very small movement. You're looking at 15 to 30 reps, depending on your level of endurance and how much your mini band, uh, the tension that you have on it. When it comes to making gains, we have to look at a number of things. So with this workout, you can do this workout twice a week. If you're not currently training legs more than once a week, I would encourage you to add another day because frequency is one of the driving factors to muscle growth. Now, of course, nutrition has to be on point. So you wanna make sure you're eating at around maintenance calories, ideally just a little bit above, and this is going to help with gaining muscle. Make sure you're pushing yourself a little bit harder each week and that you're following a program. I have several programs if you wanna check them out on my website, I'll leave a link in the description below, or you can piece together workouts from YouTube, absolutely. If you know what you're doing, make sure that you're starting a little bit low with volume, you're building up volume, you're adding weight, and you're increasing complexity as you go throughout your 90-day build. 
So let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm so proud of you. Keep pushing hard and keep training hard, y'all.